danger points. Donald brought Coldy up the valley to the exchange side, where he was soon offloaded by Crane. His driver and fireman and the manager were there. They all said goodbye and thank you to Donald. Then they lit Coldy's fire, and while waiting for steam, they looked him over carefully. A very good job, they said at last. Coldy sizzled happily. It's lovely to be at home. Hand in steam again, he said. I'm not to have a run with Catherine. Go on then, said his driver, and they trundled to the shed. Catherine was pleased to see him, and they went for a short run. I had to go with Lord Harry lately, she said. He takes risks and frightens me. When I warn him, he laughs. Never mind, come to the goalie. He'll be all right now. Later, he met two old friends, Ernest, number two, and Wilfred, number three. After some happy gossip, Coley asked, Who is Lord Harry? He's one of the new engines, they said. Who came while you were away? He's number six. Oh, I reckon Eric is serenite. They're nice, quiet engines. But old Harry's a terror. Next afternoon, Lord Harry rolled by with a reluctant coach on his way to the platform. Stupid things, he grumbled. They're all scared of coming with me. You're too reckless, said Coley. That's why. Rubbish. I'm up to date, that's all. I can go twice your speed in perfect safety. All the same, we don't take such risks on mountain railways. There's no risk. Why, with my superheat? Oh, interrupted Coley. It's superheat, is it? I'd have to say it was conceit myself. Lord Harry snorted furiously away. Ooh, screamed the coach as her wheels grounded on the curves. Be careful! Ooh, snorted Lord Harry. I like things to be exciting. Every wise mountain engine knows that you do not take risks and that points must be taken slowly. For there, the rack Rail can have no guards. Steady, boy, steady, warned his driver. But Lord Harry paid no attention. He was thinking what he would say to Coldy next time they met. There's no danger, he boasted, storming up the final slope. That patched up what really was talking nonsense. The telephone rang in the shed, and Coldy's crew were joined by the manager. Lord Harry's off at summit, he said. Well, you have to go and put things right. So they collected some workmen and a tool van and set out and set out at once. It was getting dark when they arrived. Lord Harry's shape loomed against the sky. He had come off the points and blocked both roads to the station. Wilfred was there with his coach, unable to start his journey down. The passengers buzzed around, Lord, how like angry bees. He was feeling harassed. The manager pacified the passengers, while Coldy buffered up behind to take the strain, when the men's men levered the engine's front wheels onto the rails. Wilfred, he called. Who is this wreck? It's Lord Harry, didn't you know? It looks like old Harry. It's as fat as old Harry. But of course it can't be old, Harry. Why ever not? You see, old Harry's an up-to-date engine. He can go twice our speed in perfect safety. Tee-hee-hee-hee, the coaches. Lord Harry seethed in silence. They pushed Lord, Ar Lord Harry out the way and took the passengers home. Then Coldy helped him back to the shed. It was her coach, sir, blustered Lord Harry. She never... No tails, said the manager sharply. It is, was your fault and you know it. You upset our passengers and damaged yourself by taking risks. 
We could not have that on our mountain railway. But, sir, that is enough. You will stay in this shed till we have to decide what to do with you. He turned and walked sternly away.